come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome, foolish mortals, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Changed it. For all we know, this could be the most entertaining movie talk show podcast on the internet. My vote is yes. I agree. You're listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show regulars. Holly. John. Travis. For those of you who are new to the show, we pick a movie at random, chosen by one of the random, chosen by one of the group <laughs> on a rotating, it's not random at all, every week, and then we watch we it. We get some shit. And we sit around here and we talk about it for your listening pleasure. So thank you for joining us. And please give us a star rating or a like on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, YouTube, Make sure to subscribe. And subscribe. Yes, subscribe. So this week's movie was chosen by Sean. Sean, Indeed what did was. we watch this week? We watched... Summer of sequels. It's the summer of sequels. And we watched Ghostbusters 2. 1989's Ghostbusters 2. All right. So Ghostbusters 2. 2. We want to get into just can, the movie can or I, where this came from. Can I give you a quick history of where Ghostbusters 2 kind of came from? There you go. May I first interrupt that uh, <laughs> as we're bringing Ghostbusters uh, to the freak show and kind of the uh, uh, the summer of Ghostbusters as it's been brought back for us. There's a new movie in it theaters. Was, and, no, it uh, wasn't. I will, we'll get to that. <laughs> but to celebrate Ghostbusters, I have brought you all a special treat. <gasps> oh shit! What Twinkies? Oh, that's not I special see. enough, sir. Oh, there's what a bag coming out of the refrigerator under oh. the bar. It's being opened. It oh. is. It's so cool. Oh, great. It's sugary. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Do you, you, just, you yes! want to add yours and save it for later? No. <laughs> All right, yeah, I'll save it for when I have a, a sugar drop. Oh, my God. Like, I brought everybody what? some Ecto Cooler. I'm breaking it open while right you're now. Drinking, oh, no. Yeah, go for Okay, it. while you're drinking your Ecto Cooler, <laughs> I'm going to go. give you where Ghostbusters 2 came I'm from. I'm so happy right now. <laughs> okay, Ghostbusters, the the... Actual license name actually came from a 1975 kind of like gaggy slapsticky <laughs> show involving a gorilla and these two guys that would hunt ghosts. This right? was live action, if I remember yes. correctly. Well, yes. Filmation, the guys that made uh, He Man, they got the rights to. So, so uh, Columbia originally, when the first Ghostbusters came out, they had to go to Filmation and get the name Ghostbusters for this movie, right? They're even talking about how, like, for part one, yeah. yeah, for part one, they're even talking about how, like, in the end, uh, when everybody's holding up Ghostbuster signs, they're like, we didn't, we haven't even cleared the name yet because <laughs> we knew that. So anyway, so okay, whatever they got, but for some reason, Columbia did not get the animation rights. That for some reason, they only bought the film rights mm-hmm. to the name Ghostbusters, but not the animation rights. So then, Filmation's like, oh shit. They're, they made a huge movie. Yeah. And we have the cartoon named <laughs> Ghostbusters. So they made a cartoon based that. on the I gorilla the and gorilla. the two yeah. guys. Yeah. Well, it's cr- the first episode guys has those. Group, by the way. Well, the first two guys in in the first episode of the cartoon, the two original guys from the live action give it to their sons in the cartoon. Oh, so, really? anyway, of course, Columbia's like, whoa! You know, like, we didn't think they'd do this. Filmation pulled a fast one. They're like, oh, dude, we're totally going to profit off of <laughs> yeah. these guys. Make, and then kids are just going to be like, Ghostbusters! They don't fucking care. So that's when they made Except the real ghost. Uh, you know, yeah. Uh, when uh, the kids watch. I didn't watch it. Yeah, well, when I was a kid, I remember being completely confused. And so was, I'm sure, every other kid. Where mm-hmm. you're like, why is this called Ghostbusters? Mm-hmm. And it has nothing to do with... You know, but then again, uh, dude, I had Star Wars books as a kid that had C-3PO and R2-D2 hanging out with two other dudes that look almost like Peter Vankman and Ray. (laughs) I swear, dude, I swear. And that always confused the shit out of me, too. But so, so anyway, so then Columbia was also like, well, fuck it. We're going to make the real Ghostbusters, which then became Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. And thus, you know. Was that like the second season? No, that was, I think, three or four in. Something. When Slimer became more popular. They put his name beforehand. That's so where it went downhill, Blonde in my Egon, opinion. But right? And I didn't know if that was... Blonde Egon in that one? Blonde Egon, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Blonde Egon, for sure. And the voice of uh, Garfield. Yeah, yes, for sure. Bill Murray. Yes. Yeah. And, but that was... So that, that was 86. Well. So that's still yes. like two years after the original Ghostbusters. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's kind of late in the game, you know, for kids to like suddenly like, holy shit, you know, kids latched on to this kind of raunchy adult comedy... 
that just involved, you know, good special effects. So it became like a big Hollywood blockbuster guy. And yeah, that was the that was the the thing that like everybody would all the reviews at the time I remember was like it's the first multi million dollar comedy. You know, they actually took yeah. a comedy and went and spent like, you know, Star Wars money on but it. But it is uh, but I have always liked I mean every all the Ghostbusters people we like the mythos of the the monster. You know, the, it's like Dan Aykroyd really cares about this shit because he I mean, really the guy does. is a UFO like conspiracy if you, Right. Night, if dude. you've ever seen any interviews with him, he always says his family is kind of steeped in all this this paranormal research and everything like it goes back oh he 100 percent believes oh, he in the psychokinetic like yeah, he had a show beyond, called the sci factor for yeah. a while. i remember that he hosted further beyond time. anything that you can imagine like if you just let uh dan Aykroyd go he would give you some shit that you would just be like if it wasn't dan Aykroyd, you'd lock him up oh because he, he crystal believes skull all vodka. The shit. yeah <laughs> he makes crystal crystal skull <laughs> he vodka. believes all of it yeah. you know hmm. Craziness. So, but that leads to great movies, not just, you know, comedy movies. This guy really injected his love of, mm-hmm. of like, spiritual, like, bullshit. And, and I think and that's why that endures. Because it does. Because that love put in it and those, like, little details for mm-hmm. it. Yeah. It made it yeah. great. And then, yeah. so, of course, you know, this cartoon's huge. It's like, huge. well, you got to do a huge. sequel. Yeah. All right, so let me ask you this, because I know it became Slimer and the real Ghostbusters. Yes. But it, it, if memory serves, and maybe I watched an episode or something of this when I was a kid. <laughs> Slimer was like the Janine or something of the like he helped him out or something. Well, Janine was in it, but Slimer became an integral part of yeah. the, the hey, gang. Spud, you know, he, was, he was essentially the firehouse dog. Basically, when he later yeah. went on to become pretty car- much the yeah. star, yeah. Of the cartoon, cartoon. foil. Did he speak? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He had like a really high pitched voice. Yeah. Oh, Mary. He was the lovable sidekick. Yeah. 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 It was. So this was fun what you're we going for here is this was the recalibration mm-hmm. of the of the comedy. The Ghostbusters for kids. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's what happened when this one was made. Well, a lot of stuff was recalibrated because you, of the popularity of the cartoon. Well, you got Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. You got Slimer. I mean, these are fucking toys, and they're not scary, and they're like, you know, it's like, dude, this merchandising, like, it's funny. Like, the Peter Bankman character talking about merchandising, mm. it's like such a real factor <laughs> to Ghostbusters. Well, I wonder, I don't know if that's like the, you know... It's yeah. funny because at the time, you know, of Ghostbusters, I mean, I think I was 10 when it came out. So, like, I saw it as a, as a 10-year-old and became obsessed with it. I mean, yes. like, it was the coolest thing that I saw. Coolest thing. I think in 1984, yeah. maybe the only movie I went to go see, you know, <laughs> that my parents took me to or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, I was, like, spray-painting the logo on my shirt and had a backpack and it was part of the... Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, you're ten. I mean, that's what ah, you do. But I remember it at the time. Yeah. It didn't yeah, feel like when you're like ten, was... you do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> While you're wearing, you're like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I don't remember the the impression I had of the movie. I mean, again, being ten was that it wasn't made for my age group, right? The first one, the first, one. yeah. It was like you know, made for adults, I guess, you know, or older teenagers or whatever. But sure. kids are the people who gravitated toward it. I think the hardest, you know, that's mm-hmm. why we all remember it now and have yeah. such fond memories the monsters. of the movie. Monsters yeah, I mean, in the and design bright colors and, and the yeah. yeah, I mean, just the whole conceit. I guess yeah. that you're gonna go hunt, you know, these catch ghosts, these special effect ghosts. Well, yeah. plus it has that very like Looney Tune quality of the the dirty adult jokes really are in dialogue, so kids mm. it just flies past kids' head. Right. You know, there's nothing visually dirty, mm-hmm. or, even though I did understand the whole. He did get a blowjob, like, blow yeah. blow but I job. but even I, as a kid, I didn't fucking know it was. No, yeah, I, I, I didn't. I didn't, didn't know what that was. Yeah. yeah. No. Not until later on, I was just like, what the fuck is this? See, yeah. what's funny is, that, like, I mean, I was talking earlier about how this is the first, like, movie hype I remember. Somehow I, don't, somehow I miss Batman, but somehow this was the first movie hype I remember. Wait, for Ghostbusters 2. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember the mugs and the, you know, all the shit, dude. I remember the... the hot beverage thermal mugs dude, and free awesome. balloons for the kids. Yeah. <laughs> and... Because this came out, I was telling you, uh, Travis, earlier, the summer of 1989 was the year. I just remember it was the summer of sequels where, like, it was the point when the 80s had reached critical mass. And it seemed like everything that came out that year was a sequel to something that had come out in years prior. You had Lethal Weapon 2, Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. I remember Weekend at Bernie's was that year, too. And The Abyss, but nobody said. Batman was was that year. Uh, Friday the 13th, 8. uh, Halloween 5. uh, Elm Street 5. I mean, they were all like... (laughs) 
mm-hmm. that year at the box office was mm-hmm. magical. I'm sure I was, it was going good. like every weekend. Well, I remember seeing this in theaters, scaring the pants off. I did not. This was a NBC, I think, Friday night movie for me. That's why I can still point out the commercial breaks and all throughout the movie. Well, that's where I saw these two, I think. There was Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2, NBC, mm-hmm. Friday Night Movie. Well, what's funny is I always remember, you know, oh, how much kitty this one got. But God mm-hmm. damn, watch it tonight. It's like it still yeah. has all the sex it's jokes. Solid, yeah. It, has and all I, the, it just looks, yeah. visually, it looks kiddish. Yeah. Yeah. You it know, was, some of the jokes are a little bit more kiddish, but, but just, there's still a lot of them, sexuality. Right. None of them smoke. Some of the innuendo that's except there's the back. cigar right. in Ray. I was lit. like, they traded out Ray mm. smoking. Well, everybody smokes cigarettes. Like, I think except for like Egon and Peter in yeah. the uh, first one. Like Winston and Ray always had cigarettes yeah, in their mouths. Yeah, but yeah, he only had the cigar in the Statue of Liberty. It wasn't lit. It's just yeah. in his mouth. Yeah, it wasn't lit. That's important. Well, right. Let me ask but you this, this is how the cartoon thought, affected. I, I thought some of the well. monsters were a little scarier in this one really? than in the first one. I thought the like, designs compa- were better the first time around. Over these, oh, ones. I love no, the Scaleri think? brothers. The Scaleri though. brothers are great. Yeah, they're but great. They no, become, like I think, the, more a little more generic. I mean, like, like during the, the montage later. Yeah, like the severed heads in the in the in the subway. I thought that was like for kids. My brother, that was scarier. My fucking brother. was. He used to close his eyes at that scene. Oh, he used to no, laugh at him. It's like the only thing that, like, you know, your older brother is more scared of you about. And you're like, what That's are you legit. doing? Well, this is a Ghostbuster this, movie. This came out in 89, and sorry, I'm going to age myself. I was four. I was, <laughs> I was three. And my older brother, I, I would have seven. to like tell him when these parts were over because he was scared of this. Mm. It was. It, that's why like Ghostbusters always delivered the scares. Oh, the yeah. first one I remember in the theater that moment when the librarian. Oh, I mean, man. that was that scared that was the scary. shit out of yeah, me. Yeah, that was I took scary. my nephew to that in theaters, and oh yeah, he covered his eyes. Yeah. Was, yeah. So let me ask you this, you guys who know more about this movie than I do, because as you're going to find out, like these guys, the people I'm sitting in the room with. The guys and lady uh, are, I think there's a lot of nostalgia fueling the love for Ghostbusters oh, too. No, it's a good <clears throat> concept. So here's will my say, question okay. is uh, who in the cast or the writers uh, got married and had a kid between Ghostbusters and Ghostbusters 2? Probably because all of them. That becomes like a major, like the co- major concept of the second movie is uh, child rearing. Well, okay, but look at, okay, when was Three Men and a Baby? 87? So, like, movies were starting to lean towards this, like, it's a comedy foil to have, like, three guys. Have and it almost becomes that in the one scene in this. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like a maternal. It's like, it was how they were tweaking. Because it's like, okay, Ghostbusters came out when we were still kind of reeling from the whole, like, Animal House. The raunchy right. comedy. Right. Everybody grew up. Mm-hmm. Kind of a, That's, it wasn't yeah. really a rude. Yeah. Reitman like, had two kids at least at this yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. But like the whole lovable losers thing, and I like how this movie continues the lovable losers. You know, they the end the end of the last movie is such a high note. I like how really they save the fucking day. Yeah, a song starts and everybody's just yeah. smiling and there's a parade. You know, it's like holy fuck, <laughs> we don't need to know nothing more. Everybody nope. rules. This is five years later, and, and pff, you know, yeah, dude. It's we've like, hit the reset button, so dramatically we can get, like, We can do the same movie again. Yeah, yeah. But also different. But also different. It, it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. I can see this does have the same, like, the curse of the sequel, where you're just like, Dana Barrett's got to come back. It you know, does have you a few have the, very familiar beats in this movie. Oh, but it does. The fir- I mean, come on, the familiar beats starts off with... Uh, <laughs> Basically saying Zool to Dana by her carriage, yep. or her baby carriage getting pushed yeah. in the middle of the street. Yeah. She visits Egon. That's the first thing yep. she does. Mm-hmm. And then uh, they when go, they her go to her apartment, yeah. you know, she well, said, yeah, do the test on it's her. almost right. beat for beat, yeah. the first one, except for the whole. But this is what I love well, about the, the, the commercial office. montage. I love the commercial montage. You have to love it. Yeah. yeah That's but, like when the Ghostbusters are doing good. It yeah. Was yeah. The mayor's yeah. office scene, like, felt like, like, Lifted directly from where they have to appeal to the mayor and, yeah. and yeah. like who's speaking English and then uh, I think that was just to explain the plot more Zed and Hedberg, bit, uh, because it's kind of a to get in there and explain so. it in English just like he did the first time right? <laughs> yeah. yeah you've got the, the other guy sitting there he's the chief of the mayor's chief of the his cabinet assistant or whatever. yeah he's basically filling in for the uh, EPA guy from the first one so of course like we said Dana Bear has a child right yes now we all assume that the father of the child is the stiff. Yes, from he has Ghostbusters to be. one. He has to be. Right, so, yeah. you're looking very pale. Yeah, right. but I'm sure you'll be yeah. feeling better. We assume I'm, so. I'm sorry to get a chance to meet you, sir. 
But and within five years, then Dana Barrett, like, so they had Venkman and her had some kind of relationship. A for quick a little while. twist. Yeah, I right. guess. Let's say two years. Trist. And then, okay, so trist. yeah, I like where you're going with this. So two years she was with him. Then she got married mm-hmm. to her then, old boyfriend, the the reliable one, yes. right? Then the stable she, one, which I imagine she was a, a quick baby turnaround with. from Venkman to the stiff. Yeah. Then she had a yeah. kid. But well, he's yeah, a but not the dating. It just went straight to marriage. They had a kid, and then he took off mm-hmm. for, like, got a London. job. London, a job in London, and he split. Yeah. It's all in five years. So yeah. we can reset and basically have the Venkman-Dana romance again. Yeah. Yeah. In the second movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, life happens, Colin. <laughs> like, exactly like that. Like, my ex-wife and me, I'm sure we're going to meet up here in, in seven years and have a wild romance and rekindle that magic. Just like the movies. I also think it's a, it's... You know, it, it's it's odd conceptually, I guess, going into the movie. And, it, you know, this is the best idea or the one that they agreed on. You know, they yes. thought that this is the way to go. But it's odd for me that you would start the movie with the Ghostbusters in such a low uh, state where, you know, I mean, I get it for drama. No, not even that, dude. Again, Every... the idea that in this, that they're out of, they're out of work. So, like, after they save New York and everyone saw ghosts. Now Everyone, nobody yeah. believes in ghosts, yeah. and they're out of a job. We're explained to us because they got sued by, by every agency, which I can imagine happening. They're like, "I don't care if there's ghosts. You destroyed this shit. You're in charge of it. Yeah. We're going to sue I, you." I think of that as almost like that's nineteen like thirties Laurel and Hardy movies. You're in the Great Depression. It's always about getting a job. I lost the job because of the hilarity or whatever, right? <laughs> then the next short is like, we're looking for a job. Painter wanted, you know? Yeah. So that's why I think this whole, like, I mean, just the idea of the first one starting a business, then this one, like, well, fuck, our business failed because we still got sued by all these uh, yeah, right. government agencies. I like how, you know, the first, your first, you don't know necessarily that they're out of business. You know, Ray and, uh, and, uh, Winston. and Winston are going... The very so, right, uncomfortable they, child. I love well, they party. play it off that like oh, we they got, pull there's up twelve of them in here. Right? How it's many very, are there? It's very the. I hope uh, you can handle them. Hotel or whatever, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, they, yeah, it's a birthday party because these guys are so down on their luck. They're using their like remaining celebrity. <laughs> what were they gonna do after they sang the song? I'm curious of like what? I don't how do know. Ghostbusters right entertain the proton cu- packs? Right, and like they're just, they just let it go loose and just like shoot it. Yeah, I'm just wondering how they convinced everybody else to believe that shit was still kind of fake or whatever. Right? Yeah, it doesn't because make sense. It got well, crazy. I get it. Well, I mean, I guess you know, it's like wh- I mean, you can't really judge the movie that they didn't make, but it seems like. You know, why wouldn't you go with like the next adventures of the Ghostbusters where they're, you know, they are the Ghostbusters and get some kind of. But it kind of was. Well, it's been that long. I I think a lot of it had to do with um, at the end of the movie when they're all like, I can't believe there's no spirit left in the city. I think it's the whole like New York just kind of ate them up like they do everyone else. You know, like that's the whole. Right. They'd rather step on you than look you in the than you look you in the face. The whole thing. They're just that's the negativity of New York. Like, you're going to save them, but the next day, they're not going to care. Well, because everybody's trying to save their own ass in some weird way, shape, yeah. or form. They weren't listening to them in the first place. It's all anti-whatever. Yeah, yeah. it's the whole it's But the also, whole because, I mean, come on, if the cartoon was in 86, they had to start shooting this in 88. That means it took, like, two years to be like, holy shit, this is popular enough. We can, frame, we can make another movie. Right. So, like, we got to make it five years later. We got to. Yeah, but why, you know, well, I mean. Just to have them popular, though? Because yeah. then what's the struggle, I guess? What's the, uh, you know, they needed Maybe something. Maybe that'd be harder well, to do or something. Every, so. But I also like that idea that, you know, I mean, you couldn't even. Have, there would have been Ghostbusters before these Ghostbusters if ghosts are all the time in New York. I like the idea that. I mean, these guys are exterminators, but something only comes around. Something only leaks through the dimensional gaps once when they're every around. decade. Yeah. Right. It's like once every decade <laughs> it's or convenient. something, sure. you know? Yeah, There's yeah. an end of the world scenario every decade that right. they have to take care of. So, yeah. But then in the meantime... There's nothing. It's dry. There's no fucking ghosts. There's a, they need another sort of like. Well, no, there was the 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 cartoon. They were taking care of ghosts with the. Yeah, I guess. If, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Because it's all even, in well, yeah. even yeah. this cartoon, <laughs> or even this cartoon, even this movie. <laughs> to me, the only two things that are kind of taken from the cartoon is the looks of Janine and Winston. Yeah. Those are the two things they're like, well, Wait, we got to make Winston how look... How did Winston look They different? gave him more hair? Well, because in mustache. Ghostbusters 1, he had the mustache oh, and, the yeah. sh- and the really short, shaven down hair. But in the cartoon, he looks younger, so they're like, we got to get... I call him Slave Winston, because he looks like he just stepped out of Roots. <laughs> you know? I'm like... 
just to make him look younger. So that's right out of the cartoon, you know. And those are the really the only two big. Maybe the tweaks on Slimer's design. He looks a little more like the cartoon than he than the first one, anyway. Uh, yeah, so. like he's got like the, the like the pudgy rolls. Yeah, yeah, more so the pudgy rolls. But other yeah. than the that, teeth, I think more of the teeth. Yeah, I mean they do some. I don't know. Yeah, other than that, I don't see a lot of. I mean, some of the jokes are a little mm, soft. A little bit. They don't say like they'll be like butt instead of ass or something like that. <laughs> Well, they One still shot. got they still got a couple of swear words in there, yeah. but okay. So the the plot mechanism in this is is driven by the arrival. Well, I guess there's two things, but maybe they correspond. The arrival of a painting mm-hmm. of Vigo the Carpathian. It's Vigo. It's Vigo from the the depths of the uh, New York Art Institute. Yes. Where Dana Barrett, even though she was uh, what was she a cellist? Why can't she be too thin? I'm surprised you're no, so like amazed by she this. She can, like, but they're like she obviously went to school. She probably went to Juilliard. She's New York musician. She probably went to Juilliard. But apparently she also has a degree in, like, chemical science for art Something. restoration. Well, maybe she but, took it all. It all sounds like liberal arts to me. Sure. But, you know, she can't That's play. not all liberal arts. One is science. I just like, watched the Black Swan. Do only scientists as an artist where, like, everything else is, like, pushed away by the just fact like that, that you want to dedicate yourself to this one performing I art. I love that movie. Well, but she, but also, like, I feel like she uh, she couldn't do the orchestra and have a kid. Yeah, you can't travel. So she had to find a different job. It looks like she just rubs rubbing alcohol on paintings. Oh. I don't think scientists only clean it. paintings. Oh. Yeah. But do Perhaps. only, but no, edu- educate <laughs> me. Do only scientists clean paintings? Everything you're you, doing is bad. She was painting. What was she painting? A Gauguin? She wasn't you, painting. Or she I'm was not cleaning painting. Cleaning. If she was cleaning a Gauguin, you can't but, just. But do you only can't be any person but I'm off just the saying, street. Do only scientists do that though? I'm just, I'm just saying. I don't know how hard it is for somebody to get a there's, restoration. Somebody can make a there's for them, chemical but, properties. Well, was the dude. Well, I'm just saying. How hard is it? I'm just surprised everybody's just like that. Would be really hard. Like that's a like a you have to get a She's master's degree. A smart no, lady. It's, honestly, it's it's not that it would be hard necessarily, but it. There's no way they would let someone just off the street have a Gauguin in their possession and clean it. There's four guys in this movie who... uh, But why can't you do more things than college? I'm okay if she. Can, I'm can, okay can. if she can sh- if she can clean a painting. I just like the idea that like okay, you know what my fan fiction is. This is my fan <laughs> fiction, like Probably. slash fiction or that like, the stiff sent the painting to that museum <laughs> because he knew like oh god damn it, she's gonna go back to that Ghostbuster. Yeah, if I send this painting to her, ha uh-huh. ha. Well, Probably also I guess the line. guy who uh, you know introducing the other plot mover and the guy who came up with the compound that cleans the uh, the painting. Yeah, it's this. Janusz so Peter Pohan. McNichol, who you may remember from movies such as Dragon Slayer, Ally McBeal, Ally McBeal. Dracula dead loving it. it. Yeah. Oh my God. No one remembers that. <laughs> I do. <laughs> strawberry, strawberry. That's all I remember. From. Strawberry, strawberry. So he's like in a in his Polish greatest character, character <laughs> Carpathian. This is his greatest character. He's Carpathian. That's as well? what. That's what I get you from reading. So? Like he's. That's why he knows so much about the painting. And I gets thought he was like Yugoslavian or something. Yeah, he but no, he's from the, the Upper West Side. Upper West Side. Like, side. Y- Janusz <laughs> something. Janusz doesn't Janusz have the Janusz, Janusz, Lugosi Janusz Poha. Pop character. So this is like a caricature. <laughs> this is what I took away from the movie. I'm having seen it he's so a many years ago. Character. Yeah, it's his goofy accent. You know that he does. It works. Yes, he has some of the funniest bits. I think in the movie. He's the one thing you can quote so much from this. Uh-huh. Like I still walk around the house, and but even Vigo, man, <laughs> in a real like on a mountain of, of skulls, skulls and a castle, castle of pain on I a sat throne, on of, a throne blood. of blood. And do we say that what uh, once was will be the guy who <laughs> plays will be no Vigo more. was in uh, in the mouth of madness? If you go back and listen to our in the mouth of madness. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. Five year old, my five year old. <laughs> so clearly, his voice was dubbed over in Ghostbusters. Yeah, too, that's pretty surprising. By Max von Sydow. Yeah, I which, Cito. Cito. which Colin and his wisdom pointed that yeah, out. Yeah, all those times. Yeah, that's crazy that you like. That sounds like what? I'm that like, like what? Max von and he <laughs> really only has a few lines. Like, yeah. Yeah. he doesn't really speak much more after. That. I mean, he does have a kind of like mother to uh, you, blah blah blah. Yeah. But there's not a lot of lines. Yeah. So what is Hold Vigo's? Up. Oh, sorry. Vigo. Uh, well, his Vigo is, is or what is, is Vigo is kind of like. The world again. Well, he's 
To me, he's a mixture of Rasputin and Vlad the Impaler, right? That's yeah. what we get from. Like, Dan Aykroyd took these two, like, yeah. oh, my God, one's a crazy uh, magician musician. And one's a crazy... <laughs> <laughs> a lot of musicians in this movie. Yeah. He dies like Rasputin. Well, they, exactly. Just way before, back, his, before his, his head, head died. died. <laughs> yeah. That's a good line. Like uh, Vlad the Impaler. I think mm. he got his head cut off. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, that was, well, Rasputin supposedly... Uh, uh, he's like burned, shot, stabbed, blinked a bunch of times, or some weird shit. Yeah. After I don't know, but his plan, as far as I understand it, is he needs he a body to, to come back, reborn into the modern age. <laughs> he needs a vessel, a body, just so, like it's got to be, got to be a baby, and it's got to be a baby. Why? I need no, a baby. Okay. No, no, no. You can go for it because it is weird. It's like, what's he going to do? Be a baby and then get well, yeah. grow? Like, is he going to be a baby who can, like, order people around? But that's why he possesses and... a dude. Oh, I would watch that. He possesses a dude to take care of him, almost like a Renfield or some right. shit, right? Mm-hmm. And that's the Yanush or whatever. He gets, like, Which a is the baby? character he played in Dragon's <laughs> Dead and Loving It. Ah. Yeah, he did. He played Renfield. That's right. I wonder yeah. why. I forgot about that. Yeah. But, yeah, that's some great fucking shit. The whole, like, a baby? Oh, but that would. Oh, so good. I just, uh, but that used to freak me out when his eyes turned into flashlights oh, yeah. when I was a shit. kid. And when that happened, I'm like, oh shit, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. Freak, freaked me out. That's like really one of the main things I remember freaking yeah. me out as a kid. I didn't remember, I didn't notice until years later that that was him as the ghost that picks up Oscar just right? as a woman. For Not sure. Not until years later did I'm like, oh. That's him. For sure. Interesting. But, I, but I like seeing where all you the didn't ghost notice, even though she said it was Janusz. I mean, I didn't put it together. Oh, okay. I was a child. He's too scared. He's <laughs> covering his eyes. <laughs> too terrified. <laughs> too terrified. The, the Mary, baby's on a ledge. The Mary no. Poppins ghost or whatever that comes yeah. in on the... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But I like that seeing where funny. all the uh, Ghostbusters are, like, when they're not Ghostbusting. You it know, nice. Ray open that... Raise a Raise cult. Raise a cult. Raise a cult. Yeah. Yeah. Makes sense. Opens yeah. on 7 and Saturday's midnight. Saturday's or whatever. midnight, yeah. Uh, Egon is just doing more just studies at more some tests like, for the university. More meta- he runs weird- a research lab. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Well, he's the one that introduces the idea of I'm testing um, emotional or uh, uh, yeah, physical, emotional fe- yeah. physical effects on with emotional uh, yeah. whatever. on the environment to see if physical uh, if you can physically affect your environment. And this so is he's the second that. major thing. So there's the coming of Vigo and the mood what they slime. discover they, the mood slime. Yes. But they. A just, river of slime underneath okay, New York City. Yeah, just like part... Okay, part one needed the design of the building to be an antenna to the spiritual realm. And this needed... That's why I always wonder. That's why I'm like, really, if that... I mean, because I think that river of slime is underneath there, even without Vigo, right? It's just... The I river agree. of it's been slime up for years. activated mm-hmm. the painting. It activated yes. the spirit. It gave it enough power to start coming in, I right? I agree with that. Because that, because even in the first movie, they talk about even before they find out the building is a conductor, they're like, "Well, why is why are there so many ghosts? Well, psycho act, you know, <laughs> right. whatever Force, emotional energy, a pure selenium." And then in this, they <laughs> go <laughs> right to the whole, you know, yeah, so much Real bad genius or nothing, so much wacko. bad energy and negativity in New York that it's building, and it actually, right. I mean, they show it's it throughout turning the, into this they sludge. Sh- they show it throughout the movie that as you, as it gets more wow. angry, it grows. As it's mm. growing, yep. And then it, when they show the painting, when he first appears in the painting to Janusz, they show the river of slime behind him is is slowly rising. So which, you can see that this is currently happening. Wow. Which Dan yeah. Aykroyd, uh, like, oh, fuck, I want to say on the special features of the Ghostbusters 2 Blu-ray disc, he cites that dude that did the studies with the uh, the 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 uh, ice crystals or whatever, like mm-hmm. positive and negative things on ice crystals. Mm-hmm. And, like, they form beautifully in, like, whatever, when there's positive shit. Dan Aykroyd cites that. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, it's like there's someone that wants to believe. Yeah. Like, see? See? But I have always loved, like, once again, that's why that's why it's cheesy as taking shit from the cartoon and as, you know, most all sequels do, where you just kind of, well, let's take the things from the first movie, implant it in the second movie. I still think they did a good job. Like, a sequel to me, in a way, should be like a comic book, right? Second act, in a weird way. Even yeah. though we start, yeah, they're down on the luck, we're still in a second act where we get right to, like, well, here's what we're studying, and here's the story. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, like, right from the get-go, even before they build their company back up, you're still getting right into, like, psychokinetic energy, the negativity of New York. 
I kind of wish that shot of like when Dana Barrett is first walking the baby and, and there's like the two things that happen where people are like, mm-hmm. yeah, I yell at the, mm-hmm. I, they also do that in, Ghost, in RoboCop 2 where they go down the oh, street right, with somebody yeah, and yeah. show like bad people and be like, oh, you bastard. Look how society is falling apart. And sometimes I'm just like, really? On one street, there's just like, that guy's a dick. That guy's right. a dick. And Going down the line. That's the point, though. They're showing that that negative energy is what's feeding. I, I and just wish that was shot a little better. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> okay. I get it, but I just wish. Is you know. there more to Ghostbusters 2? It felt to me this way, anyway, that it's like more, you know, uh, like, because it's a, it's a, it's both a criticism of New York and a celebration, I think, of right. New York. Eventually, yeah. everybody will get together, yeah. kind of like in the first one, and, you know. But there's like there were a lot of references that even now, you know, I mean, it's years on and I'm like, wait, who the fuck are they talking about? It's probably somebody who was famous in New York at the time. Like what? I don't remember their names, but they mentioned them. It's like I was, you know, who, like, uh, you, like the mayor. Talking to oh, yeah, the ghost of LaGuardia. Yeah. LaGuardia. Yeah. Oh, the guy who like yeah. the airport. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, pretty he, was, sure he was like a mayor of New York. He was the mayor of New York back in the, back in the uh, okay. like yeah. the 40s. Yeah. 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 The airport named But I mean, there were jokes like that where yeah. it just seemed like it. there was a lot of like, if you are from New York. This probably means a lot more to you than it does to the uh, maybe the layman mm. from the Midwest, which is me. But that's once again just to kind of go. I mean, the first Ghostbusters have like had the whole like you know how was Elvis and have you seen him? Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, they're just <laughs> yeah. So they bring everybody back. They so do. this is the first. And the they have fir- to help Dana oh, again. Yeah, I would say the first like uh, act of this movie, pretty good, pretty solid. I Massive. mean, again, yeah. you know, with the conceptual thing aside, it's like it does ramp up pretty well. Like Travis right. says, puts everything. It doesn't right jump on anything the plane that seems out of place. It almost does put it right back to where it was. Like, oh shit! It's almost like a few months after. Dana Barrett and Peter broke up. Not even like a few years. Right. You know, you get right back to the whole like I screwed it up, and you know, yeah. Now I'm back also, in your life, like I, I it love that really line. Like I'm like... ready for a. Heart. I know this is asking for a heartbreak or whatever he says. <laughs> it it almost doesn't feel like they have any shared history together beyond the first movie because they're recapping to each other like what happened, what we missed out on. It mm-hmm. doesn't really feel well, like that's there was because. Anything. I mean, again, dude, I, Ray, it's a comedy. So we're no, let, let me. I'll, no, this is my universe, dude. Ray is friends with peter and egon peter and egon are not friends mm. and e- do ray is the heart of the ghostbusters he's winston's friend works on e- ecto one with him i mean ray is everybody's friend but right. they are not each other's friends right that is why you know they're just you know because i mean egon's a real scientist i mean peter no, Bankman, no, he's I, just a psychologist yeah but i meant that uh, that uh, peter and dana spend a scene or so Catching the each other up right. on what, what happened, happened between the why two you, of them. Yeah, and it's like shouldn't you guys already know this? But they're but why would they talk? Because right. she got married <laughs> and like I mean, I'm yeah, sure... she says they fall out of touch. Yeah, yeah, that happens. Okay. Apparently, everybody right. does. Yeah, right. Satisfied. So, <laughs> but they got also gotta... brings back. Uh, uh, oh God, Lewis. Yeah, Lewis yeah. yeah. Tully. Lewis Tully from Rick Moranis. God bless his soul. God bless him. So I he wish was he'd a, come back. He was a. He was just a tax consultant, right? He did your team as an accountant. He was a tax yes. lawyer. Yeah. Like he techni- he? Technically, he... In the first time... That's why I invited clients and not my friends. Right. So I could have it <laughs> I think he was just off. like a h and R Block guy or whatever the <laughs> first time. He was an around. accountant, but I think yeah. he yeah. had his yeah. tax... I think he was a tax lawyer. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. This time, he was a tax lawyer. Working on sure. defense. Sure. He's probably one of those guys where he defense. got his law degree Once just again, as everybody to have it and never had to use it <laughs> yeah, until now. Everybody probably. has like multiple little like things they're good at in this movie. But then he does <laughs> yeah. have to use everybody it in the courtroom scene, which that is, I mean, that's like his funniest moment in the movie. In the movie, just his dialogue with the judge and everything. <laughs> Later on, he's like, my guys are under a judgment restrangement order. Restrangement order. Yeah. <laughs> that kills me every time. Oh, I love like, it. But turn, that's also... Do you have a they, point, Mr. Tully? Oh, that's do I? They turn, no, we've helped them enough. <laughs> they turned me into a dog once and helped me. Or, Thank you. Yeah, I got turned into a dog once and they helped me. Thank that you. might be my favorite that. scene that in the movie. When they start digging... For the, the, you know, they're digging to see, like, you know, the point where the carriage, uh, where it the stops, baby in the stops. Middle of the you know, they're going to dig, and that's where they find the slime. But of course, you know, of course, the government and the cops, you know, got to. I love that scene, like, like, what did I tell you? The phone lines are over there. there. <laughs> <laughs> that's just so funny. You know, we come out over the phone company. So tell us another one. I got a major gas leak. <laughs> Where do you think all this stuff is coming from? The sky? <laughs> you know, I've heard uh, in like reviews and stuff since that, you know, since this came out, that like Bill Murray seems very like his heart's not in, he's phoning it in, but it was yeah. watching it today. Really? Yeah. Oh, he did in the first one. The only reason he did Ghostbusters is so 
uh, Columbia would finance Razor's Edge, his philosophical man, fucking on a philosophical quest. That movie sucks. But it's but it, I never get the sense that he's not trying in this movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. he's just he's naturally been, funny. He, he is. is. He. Have you ever watched his face Dude. when he's shooting? When he's shooting. Like, he's always making some weird, goofy face. Like, he's struggling with it. Well, I'll like, tell you, when they get hurt and they're struggling <laughs> awesome. on the ground, he's the only one that's just going, oh, boy. He's not struggling <laughs> yeah. at all. He's not moving. But just he's, like, hey, he's in, the Ghost, he's cool. in the Ghostbusters remake, he walks in and sits down for the whole shot. <laughs> he really does. He doesn't fucking like, I'm not stand standing. up. He hates Ghostbusters. <laughs> <laughs> to him, it's fluff. It's not, it's not, you know, oh, I hate, oh. I want to talk about Bankman. Not Bill Murray. <laughs> but I thought he pulled it off. I mean, like, I yeah, thought no, that he was, yeah. he was infectious, his personality. If he this was, is him not I mean, trying. He's great. He's, yeah. he's just great. He's yeah. always great. Even, yeah. I mean, just the whole baby shit. You know, yeah. he's hilarious, right? Yeah. Which, which we didn't even talk about where he was at the very beginning. He had his own show. Oh, he had his own show. And, and his guest. The world of the psychic. And his guest that was on the I show was the psychic that said the world was going to end on New Year's Eve. That's great. And that foreshadowed the entire movie, mm -hmm. which I did not get until tonight. Really? <laughs> right. It took me a long time to get that. Like, not until I always like, thought that I, was honestly, years ago. Honestly, I think like, it's oh! because whenever I watch this movie, I watch it on TV. And I'm and it's already like ten minutes in when I start, uh, so I just haven't usually. seen that part since right. like nineteen eighty. Plus, that's a really dude. That's a bland looking part, you know, the yeah. set and everything. Mm. It's kind of forgettable, well, even though it's, it's supposed like, to be. It's yeah. supposed to be like public access. Yeah, TV. for yeah. sure. Yeah. So even though I love set. the lady's yeah. story about the uh, meeting an alien. So your alien and the, had a room <laughs> at the Holiday Inn. Mm -hmm. It could have been a, a room on the UFO made to look like the hotel room, but I can't be too sure about that, Peter. I love that lady. I have a strong psychic feeling. He's so into it. Well, that makes sense, too, because, you know, yeah. once again, like, you start Ghostbusters 1 with him doing his, like, negative right. yeah. uh, mm -hmm. thing on the yeah. psychic. This and is then, the next level in that. Yeah. yeah. And plus just trying to scam people out of money sure. and shit. Because I, I forget, and that great. is what his whole thing was. He was a doctor, but, you know, of what... Of, the psychology, he's, parapsychology. He's a paranormal psychologist. Right. I have yeah. dual degrees yeah. in psychology. But I think, right. like, if I was to write a book, Ray got him to do the parapsychologist. Right. And that's because, well, that's what I've always loved. You like, I studied. wish... Well, I wish Bankman <laughs> had... Because in the, in, the, in, in the first movie, Bankman's role is to find out, is the person talking to us about a ghost crazy? That is why a psychologist, parapsychologist, mm -hmm. needs to be on scene. To talk to the person, is this a, you know, a hoax? Is this... You know, that's why he's talking to library in the very first scene, right. you know. Is anybody in your family you ever Alice? suffered from? <laughs> yeah. Are you calling a big yes? Menstruating right now? Yeah. Back what does that man. got to do with it? <laughs> Back, Back off, man. I'm a scientist. And I wish he did that in this movie. Like, when, when they go into the museum, you know, he's like, get him, Ray. It's like, really? That should have been Peter. Peter should have been the one attacking the dude and trying to, you know, get to know, like, what's this guy's deal? And, yeah. you know, because, yeah, it's Yonosh that's kind of giving the, you know, uh, Vigo the idea that, oh, this will be the baby because he's got a thing for her. I think, I think the only reason that Peter didn't do it is because Peter already talked to him and he thought he was annoying. Yeah. Honestly. I'm just saying, uh, you know, Some of their movie interactions roles. is hilarious. When mm -hmm. uh, they first meet, Venkman goes to shake his hand. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he just holds it? Yeah. <clears throat> very so awkwardly. Good. Yeah, it just the reaction. That's a good are, joke. Yeah, fantastic. That's very good fucking joke. subtle. For as many people who rag on this movie Dude. as not being funny... This it's movie, hilarious. And I never... It's even funnier, because I've I realized tonight that I have been watching this movie by myself for... Uh, the entirety yes. of my life. Yes. I have never watched this movie with anybody. <laughs> Ever. Not your wife? <laughs> uh, yeah, but my, uh, no. A, a maybe joke. once. No, it's true, but maybe once, and she doesn't, my Most wife doesn't people, like movies. People hate this movie, though. <laughs> they do. It's people crazy. They hate this they movie. They like the remake more than this. They and do. it's like, what the fuck what? are you, I know. People don't like this It makes me want to make an internet video. They call like, it, what? <laughs> <laughs> they call it garbage. They don't think it's funny. They don't like this All movie. All they do is look at the kitted up aspect. Because, okay, did Ivan Reitman direct this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Because it does look like, okay, this movie looks like it's shot on a set. It doesn't look like it's shot in New York. Is it shot in New York? I yeah. have no idea. I, I assume so. some of those streets. So. I've been on yeah. those streets, though. Because, like, yeah. Thing. Dude, the firehouse, whenever they're in the firehouse, it's like a set, right? I mean, we even talked about how we don't even know how they got the firehouse back. It seems like they're sort of down on their luck in their <laughs> business. Did someone keep the firehouse? How are they paying the bills? How are they? Don't even touch on it. That's classic Ghostbusters style. Don't need to know. As don't even need to know. As long as they're they back had in the, the firehouse, montage. that is all we I care about. about. Go, I, I, I ain't afraid. No, that's when you know, it's like, oh, things are going good. They got lots of money. I ain't afraid. No, go. I, I, I. 
Uh, <laughs> this one they bring in the horrible, horrible hip hop. Uh, no, goddammit. The, uh, the, the soundtrack is in control. Well, I kept on sitting there going, <laughs> like, Ray Parker Jr., oh, while I was watching the new, the remake sequel or whatever it is, the remake. Mm. Uh, I was sitting there going like, man, Ray Parker Jr. must just be sitting at home on a stack of cash. I think Huey him, Lewis's. And him because well, that's yeah. his, uh, his yeah, version. But, yeah. but, but this has got, you know, you've got three three movies, at least two video games. The movie, the, the remake, I think uses samples of the Ray Parker Jr. In like song in like four, four songs. songs. The guy's just got to be sitting on a pile of money. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> they probably Columbia probably owns that shit. He probably well, no keeps money. on. I'm it, sure he his something. name was. He was the at the premiere. All of on all of them. He was at the premiere. Let's talk so about like the where our Ghostbusters come back. Kind of like the moment we're waiting it. for them. That we're first back. They're wearing hour. gray suits, which I love. Which I don't know why they don't keep that up for the rest of the. Movie. I don't either. They have gray suits in the montage, but but they end up in court because they get caught after it. after digging the hole and collecting their slime they get brought up they get arrested this court does not court. recognize the existence <laughs> of ghosts or specters because apparently there's a restraining order against them since the events of the first one that prevent you, them from doing yeah. their job i like how this movie it's like an onion it peels like what's happened in between those 5 years and why they're not doing what and what right. it's like they can wear it on their backs they cannot turn the proton packs yeah. on yeah yeah exactly right there's specific <laughs> rules yeah. Those things are nuclear, uh, and so they nuclear nuclear uh, accelerator. accelerator, unlicensed nuclear accelerator. Um, so they get the represented in court by Lewis, obviously. And they have apparently. some of the slime they got from. They do the mood the, slime, uh, the mood slime, which is sitting next to uh. their equipment on the table. And the judge, uh, I forget his name, but I'm you. If you're listening, you know who the judge, judge is. Yeah. Yeah. Judge Wachner or something. Judge Waxler or Wexler, Wexler, I think Wexler, it is. Yeah. And he just freaks the out. Hammer. He first of yeah. all, they're found guilty. Yeah, and they're sentenced to like twenty five thousand dollars each, eighteen months at Rikers Island, and then he takes a personal aside and tells them that they should well, be burned. Well, because there's that guy's like, I've been working in the system for whatever, and if I've never seen nothing like this, if something happened, they put it down there. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh fuck. Yeah, no appreciation for Not like closing all. a hell dimension yeah. the first time. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right, right. But, they, right? but hey, totally but, they, ignored. but no, they were up there though. So it is kind of like a guy. I imagine it's a government cover up. Only the Ghostbusters <laughs> were up there and knew it was a dimension opening with a god coming. This, but right? there was a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man on the streets. But, but they the thing, don't know why. I get the impression <laughs> that from later in the movie, once the Ghostbusters actually do come back, that the citizenry of New York is actually glad to see them back. And because they there's remember an uptake. The, yeah. the, 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 you yeah. know, that they saved the world right. before. The government it's was more the like, bureaucracy is like, right. you know, but I have always wanted to pay us for this. We see that in the courtroom. Yeah, Pete, when Peter's on on the stand and the audience in the courtroom is cheering for him, oh, I love that. Yeah. I love what's what, sometimes what some say? shit happens. Shit you don't want to like, deal you with can't it. Explain and who are you gonna call? Whatever. Yeah, sometimes <laughs> things happen that you can't explain. Shit happened. Yeah. Who are you gonna call? That was awesome. But he freaks great. out on him and he's yelling at him. All of a sudden, the slime's all bubbling everything yeah. and explodes. Oh, and we the get Scalari possibly brothers. the coolest ghosts in this I love movie. them. I fucking I love them. I love these ghosts. They're my favorite character. They really are. But one of my favorite ghost characters. And it leads to one of the to me is one of the best images of this movie. For some reason, the Ghostbusters in suits yeah. with proton packs on catching ghosts is one of my favorite images and they're of like, anything in the Ghostbusters. Oh, like, yeah. like it's cool. laugh it. It's Plus, fantastic. Right, because really? they're back. Because they're like, after they shoot them the first time they disappear, they start laughing at That them. scene <laughs> also was the very first time I understood the proton packs. I understand, oh, it's like a lasso. These guys are the- lassoing <laughs> ghosts, mm-hmm. you know? That's right. the yeah. very first... I don't know why that's the first time I ever caught it. Maybe because the Slimer thing was... It was more like Slimer running around than the proton pack stuff. But in this scene specifically, I was like, oh, shit, I get it. Oh. They're ghost wranglers. Yeah. yeah. You know, you don't just have a weapon or whatever. You have to learn to throw it right. and hook and it. pull them over. And fuck, yeah. yeah, it's like yeah, fishing. You shorten it. Yeah. You're down, ghost yeah. fishing. Right. And you can <laughs> yeah. shorten it and pull them in and yeah. get them over there. Yeah, but yeah. it's one of the best scenes I in this movie. I fucking love that scene, dude. Love it. I will, great even scene. if I don't go back and watch the entire movie, I just pull up YouTube and watch this scene. <laughs> it's a great scene. That's how much I love this scene. Dude, I do. Listen, I when, Rick, it, when Rick Moranis like leans down, and goes, "Wow!" <laughs> I love that. The whole, I mean, Joe I do think Ray, oh, Ray. Egon. Egon. I was talking about how, like, what, in the first twenty minutes of this movie, Egon says more than he Colin does in the whole. Colin is shaking movie. his head hard right now because he's just like, "I don't got it. I don't get it. I don't, I don't get, get it." it. No, for, well, uh, wrap up. Uh, okay. The ghosts are so, awesome well, characters because Ghostbusters only has like the library ghost Slimer. There's only a few ghosts you can identify to. Mm. So the Scalari brother. I tried it for murder. You know, gave him the chair. Got to the chair. Yeah. 
I and, like how they got lightning bolts and shit. Like, right, yeah, the electricity <laughs> is crackling around. And the fact that they, I don't know why I find this sexual, but the fact that they picked up that that girl lawyer and you saw, like, her, her slip out. and all that shit. As a kid, I was just always like, that's ghosts doing weird, like, ghosts have always been sexual in the Ghostbuster <laughs> movies. I think they were just carrying her, but okay. I'm just saying. <laughs> as a young boy watching, like, <laughs> looking at a girl slip or whatever, there's a reason in a Christmas story that's a provocative lamp. <laughs> you know? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. So, but, all, so oh. all this so all this negative energy in the city is making more ghost activity is yes. what we're getting at, right? Yeah. I believe so, so. It is building up. Sean and I's favorite ghost joke, the jogger. Oh, that's, that's a great, great joke. That great joke is hilarious. Where he's running and checking his pulse. Yeah. That jogging is a great jogging joke. through Central Park. A ghost, ghost jogger, pulse. and he's checking his pulse. Hilarious. <laughs> that is great. That's great. <laughs> then, in part of the obligatory ghost montage, the ghost catching montage. Of course, because they're, they're back. Yeah, they're back. I like the little crystal We're the best. thing where they make We're the beautiful the, uh, at yeah. the jewelry store. We're the only ghost Ghostbusters. <laughs> I've been posting that a lot. Well, the. <laughs> And this thing, instead of a you know, if you're keeping the beats of the original movie, that you have a giant uh, Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in the first movie. So your second movie says that you have to have a giant uh, ghost creature. And so in this movie, we bring in what's more well, New York. But, but at least it's but at least there's a reason for this. Is why I love Dan Aykroyd and Harold Race of his writers. Uh, there's a reason for it. You know, yeah. uh, there's a they, this this slime has built a shell around the museum that Dana Barrett went to go get her son after she saw the Janos Mary Poppins ghost right. come with the yeah. long like Mister Fantastic <sighs> arm and. Uh, you know, they build a shell, and that's where Janos kind of tells her the whole, like, you know, don't you want to be a mother to a god? I, I fucking find that really interesting, right? It's you like can, the Rosemary's Baby some, thing. He, Rosemary <laughs> Baby does it. Rosemary does it. And Dana Barrett's saying no. That always bothered me with Rosemary's Baby. It's like, she's going to fucking raise the devil's child. Yeah. Fucking bitch. It's supposed to bother you. That's why it does bother movie. me. Yeah. Yeah. But but Dana Barrett's like, no, you monster. He's Until like, he starts listing like, off can, the things you could get. You it was really, really funny. Great apartment, a nice apartment, free parking. Free parking. <laughs> yeah, but she was just going along with that to get right. out of the what cage. Right? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. But it's like, yeah. you could raise a god and you could get free parking. But I've always found that creepy, you know, because that's the whole, like, I don't know. I've always found that creepy and rapey, the whole, like, you'll learn to love me. You know, right. I've always found that fucking, like, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's supposed because, to be. Because he's possessed. Well... Yeah, yeah, You're but it's still like, idea, uh, like, yeah, just yeah. the you idea. Check up with me, and eventually uh, you'll learn to love me. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, come it's on, if, if, if it's you're old right. school, that's old school thing. Yeah, everybody else will die. Marriages. You know, everybody she'll else, learn yeah. to love him through attrition. Now, that's <laughs> frightening to <Yeah>. me. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but here's what I don't understand. Uh, well, okay, but maybe maybe this is a good point. Maybe you've got an answer for it. The idea that Vigo needs the baby in order to have manifest in a corporeal form. Yes. And then when things get bad, they come. The Ghostbusters eventually come in. They pilot the Statue of Liberty and to get a positive. They need positivity. Dude, I love positive mood slime. I can't believe we didn't talk about Dancing Toaster. This movie... (laughs) Dude, I shit you not. Dude, I I shit you guys not, man. Loves Jackie Wilson. Ever since this movie, Jackie Wilson, to this day, is my favorite fucking singer. I love Jackie Wilson. You're sleeping with it, aren't you? Yeah. You dog. Oh. You're not sleeping with it, are you, right? <laughs> a lot of good. Lo- I'm telling you, a it's lot always of the quiet that's so ones. crazy, man. A lot of sexual humor for what you think is kind of a more kiddish version, right. but probably more sex humor than the first movie. But it's a lot night when I'm not here. It's a lot. It's less uh, scatological, maybe than the first. Movie. It's very. It's more colorful than the first movie. It's yeah. very. It feels very more like on the set than the first movie. For for some reason, the first movie felt like New York to me. This feels like ah, the whole movie's. On yeah, the it set. does. It feel it, it's that claustrophobia that you get with like something that's shot. Yeah, they get like just yeah. close up yeah. on the people. Mm-hmm. So like, past this wall is a bunch of dudes saw in the next fucking scene or whatever. <laughs> you know. Okay, yeah. so we'll do this in ADR question. later. What's your question right. about? Vigo. Yeah. Vigo. Vigo. Uh, so once the Ghostbusters have come in into the, you know, uh, the, they they the break shell. through the shell with the Statue of Liberty, which uh, they're able to pilot with, with an the NES Nintendo advantage. Controller. That was my favorite controller <laughs> as a child. Which they whipped up. this right. I'll pop for a week in Vegas with a Jolly Green Giant. I totally know what, you're, what oh, your so question good. is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I get it. What? Well, what why it? does, if Vigo needs a baby to make <laughs> sure. manifest corporeally, yeah. why does he. He then he shows does, up yeah. as a corporeal entity. Yeah. He's a ghost. That is just his. He's using the last of his powers to 
Com corporeal, not like corporeal, but ghost corporeal, like poltergeist corporeal. He right? looked I mean, real as fuck to me. He, he was, was, he was, he was like, he was hiding, doubling and shit. Like, dude, he was real. saving his. He was hiding in the. He was hiding. He was in, saving his essence. He was hiding in the painting. Yeah, that's when he finally came out of the painting. To without, be like, without the help of the kid, Uh-oh. he didn't need the kid to come out of the painting. He was just a go. He was a spirit okay. hiding in the painting. No, I have a. I, I, but I have, I have a sub question to follow Colin's question. Why then does he possess Ray? Why can't he just possess a regular because, person instead of a baby? Because just like the first movie, Ray <laughs> is a more sensitive right, he's dude. He's a child at heart. I mean, and, and they already made that link when 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 they when the Ghostbusters went to the museum in the first place. They made that link right where he yeah, got like he's all got the, the stairs. stairs. So he doesn't yeah. need and a baby. So he doesn't need a baby. He just needs a sensitive man. Well, but but I look mean, at don't we but all, look Holly, at don't Ray. We, all. we really do. But look at Ray. It didn't look it, in a weird way. It wasn't pure, right? He looked like this right. crazy deformed like monkey. Demonic, I love that yeah. you are naughty monkey. I love that. <laughs> Apparently, that's a, a, a through line that was supposed to be in more of the movie. There are scenes where like there's like. Ray got tainted with oh, that's Vigo. Right. And so he's... Really? Yes. Because Deleted there, scenes. Uh, and some of it's still in the movie, where he runs the red light, and Venkman kind of looks at him, and then oh, double takes. Oh, that's... That's okay. supposed to be, like, Vigo taking oh. over and making him drive crazy throughout oh. town. So he's running okay. red lights, doing crazy stuff. Like, that was more in the movie, but it got cut back. You heard it here. Uh, you heard it here second. first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the true Ghostbusters fans have heard that. But I've always liked that, that Ray is this more sensitive. That's why he thought of, no. you know, Stay Puft. That's I why Ray's he's right. able to get possessed. Exactly. And, you know, you know yeah. I, Ray, am Vigo. Vigo. Oh, shit, that was scary. <laughs> but I, I, I love that Earth. image of the big head getting shot it with all the huge. ooze. Yeah. And, like, it's, that's cool to me, yeah. dude. It's like, I love how, I just love the idea of Ghostbusters is never about taking on the bad. What they're about is shutting a door that's beginning to open. They're 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 dealing with the bad guy before he gets through. The bad right. guy's never at his full potential. And that, that's I don't know, that's always thrilling to me. That's a cool idea that that there's no ghost activity. Ghost activity starts to rise up. You have to find the source. Where is the door opening? To what dimension or to what major demonic spirit and you fucking close the door before it uh death is but a door. Time is but a window. I'll be back. back. I love these. So, how many Brilliant. of you have played the sequel, Ghostbusters, the video game? I started. I, I started watching <laughs> the cut scenes edited together. Okay. It's a great it starts, game. You'd have to play it because it's like eight hours or twelve hours. It really or something is, like but it's that. a great game. Like it's the closest to being a Ghostbuster you'll ever get. Yeah, but it has it's a little Brian too Doyle, much Doyle like Murray first the movie yeah. uh, references. Well, so. only it it ties it back. Cover, it covers <laughs> everything and ties back and goes back to certain things. It's almost like like when you're talking about like if there are points where there is a surge of ghost activity, it almost feels like there are certain areas where that surge is more powerful. And it's like it's happening in the game, and they have to go revisit these areas mm. where, like, the surge is powerful and the ghosts are popping up again. So that's why they revisit, it, like, the Sedgwick and the yeah. museum and the library and everything. But it leads back to the, the was it, Shandor or whatever? The guy Shandor, who yes. originally, like, his plan is still in yes. effect somehow. We're talking about the game. This, yeah, 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 we're talking about it the is, game. It is basically <laughs> Ghostbusters 3 because it, it has the main, all the main Characters mm-hmm. are back. I mean, Written everybody by except, Aykroyd and Ramis. Yeah, I mean, it's wow. like yeah. it's yeah. Ghostbusters three. Huh. It's great. Yeah, yeah. Ghostbusters the video. But game. you can watch the cut edited scenes on YouTube. It's about almost two hours. Yeah, so you or get you the can story and yeah. be a Ghostbuster. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> it's really fun. And that's but I like how this... like to get Bill Murray back for that was like you oh, know right? I guess a surprise. How right? If, well, if he hates it so much, he probably did it on the phone. <laughs> but uh, but I did like how Ghostbusters too. It created more weapons for the Ghostbusters. I love the the ooze uh, shooters. The positive. I love the positive charges. Right. That's yeah. great, dude. That's such a great idea. Slime blowers. Yeah. Oh man, that's a great idea. <laughs> well, I, I noticed they re-outfitted the Ecto one with a bunch of like yeah. I don't know yeah. what Tubes the hell. And- Things. Yeah, a, uh, like the marquee on the side. Yeah, yeah. The little, yeah. like yeah, digital uh, sign. Oh, yeah, it's great. Dude. Readouts, what have you. <laughs> they got a new uh, theme song because the Ray Parker one was old, so they got Bobby Brown <laughs> to do a new one, which I love, dude. Let me see if I can. 
too hot to handle, too cold to hold. You call the Ghostbusters in the in control. Had them throwing a party for a bunch of children. When all the while the slot was under the building, so they packed up the crew, got a grip, came equipped, grabbed their proton packs on the backs, and they split. <laughs> Holy shit. Wow. <laughs> oh, I think wow. those are the words. I, I will say that. Uh, I might Travis, be wrong on a word or two. Travis shit. started <laughs> rapping, and Colin called for another beer. I'm not saying they're connected, I'm just saying it happened. I love the music. I, I just I love too. The, I connect more with the, for some reason, just maybe because he's a better singer. I connect with the Bobby Brown theme song more than the Ray Parker. Just I do like the guy's a fucking Bobby good singer. Bobby Brown speaks to you. It, he's hey, a good singer. I don't like any of his other career. And he turned was... Whitney Houston to a crackhead. <laughs> yeah. I fucking like And that was song. him who asked for the proton pack for his younger brother. Yeah. That was Bobby yeah, Brown. Yeah, the the and I like that Ray yeah. uh, considered it. Like, he did. He's uh, like, uh, no. Because uh, he's a kid. A, a proton pack <laughs> is not for I guess he's right. He's the heart of the Ghostbusters. I love Ray. I guess he's right. So they douse the painting. The painting explodes. It like oh, it's like a portal. Lewis. It's like a portal. It explodes. It, right? Yeah, Lewis has his thing? fun little like. Lewis is like, I'm gonna help them. Oh yeah, yeah Lewis. Which it does suck that, that Janine didn't do that because in the cartoon Janine she does. In the cartoon Janine got to be a Ghostbuster, and that but this movie cool. should have done that. It's yeah. weird that, that they did cool. to Lewis because oh fuck Lewis, I like Janine. I mean, we all. I love Janine. I love Janine. It would have been great right. if Janine was just like gone out and done it. Yeah, yeah it's, it, what's really weird, it's weird that the first movie tried to have a romance between Janine and Egon, and then this was a romance between Janine and Lewis. Yeah, this Very was strange. a romance that felt more like, I guess, a, a, you know, an extent where you'd think it would go. But not Janine from one. Janine from one would not be with Lewis. Brand. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? Yeah, Only yeah. Janine from like, part two. Yeah, they're going to put the nerds Lewis. together, right? That's the idea. <laughs> right. It's like the ner- nerd love. I collect you know. spores, molds, and fungus. Yeah. yeah. I find that very interesting. I read I read a lot myself. I'm usually myself. very psychic about this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm afraid you're going to die. The but phone rings and goes too through. cool. So that's why she's got to go for Lewis. Because Lewis yeah. is more on her level of uh, uh, sure. outcast. She's a very realized feminist character as well. She's like, I want you. And I want you tonight. She's yeah. like all over him. Oh, dude, all over him when they're babysitting. <laughs> uh. mm-hmm. I totally forgot that Lewis was in this movie, and I was like, actually, uh. like, is uh, Janine in this movie? Kind of like, oh, of course she is. Of course. When they showed up, yeah. But Lewis is like, I'm gonna help him. He slips on. He's like, I was born to wear this <laughs> <laughs> with his earmuffs. It really, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> god, this equipment's heavy. And he goes off, and yeah, of course he gets bus. onto the bus, and Slimer's driving the bus. Like, <sighs> okay, but I didn't know you had your license. That was kind of, huh? That was. I mean, I kids. could car that was for the kids. That was, for, that was absolutely for the kids. That's for the kids. Yeah, it was fun though. It's a fun scene. It is. I like Slimer. I yeah, feel I like love Slimer. I feel like Slimer is not a threat. So no. they kind of just let him go. They're just mm. like, all right, he's not hurting anybody. He just wants to let eat him shit. fly around and yeah. eat he's whatever the he wants ghost to do. Of, uh, of Jim Belushi. Of Belushi, right? So they let him be around. Yeah, he doesn't want to hurt him. So do you have any more stray observations about Ghostbusters? Uh, have we wrapped I it up? Have... Where does this leave them off? What What is the potential future for the Ghostbusters? They have a cool They're painting. Back together. <laughs> oh, for God's sake. <laughs> I, know. I you think the could... act of the, the, uh, yeah, the like Colin ooze. The, the positively charged slime changed the painting. Yeah, because it was Colin's... them that were shooting the painting, so it used their own psychic energy Colin's to Colin's eye paint. roll was audible. It was. Uh, like, yeah. I think the room it was. Oh. That was so fun. I thought that was. I thought that was really fun. Give it to them. They just saved the world. Because what if that painting was never really a painting? What if the painting was only a spiritual like right, thing? Spiritual right. What if? What if, if something else comes? Because here, when it'll, it'll when the spirit that. leaves, there is no painting. Like V when Vigo the ghost leaves, there is no painted Vigo. So what if like the whole image is? The representation of its possession. Yeah. Well, that's. I think that is the, the yeah. gist of the story, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 So. So I think yeah. it's funny that there's a because that spirit's gone. So what? I believe know. it's one of the fettuccines. <laughs> that's, <funny. laughs> that's not funny. But, uh, but the painting's funny, the painting's not the fettuccine thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think what we just end with like a drum roll again, right? Like. No more talking after that, right? No, it's That's done. just the end. No, like it's, saved it. it's, what else it's a new year. The Ghostbusters. That's a great. I, it's a new year. New York, yeah, new York like, is celebrating. Oh, That's it. Yeah. What else do you need? Everybody loves the Ghostbusters game, I love which the is where I want them to be. I want everyone yeah. to love, I love them. them. It's the ending <laughs> we want. Everybody should love the Ghostbusters. They should. Maybe not the new ones. But definitely yeah. these ghosts. Oh, the hell you say. All right, so <laughs> I guess that brings us to wrap up. Do you hear that sound? Oh, God. Oh, no.
The hour has come, sirs. Thank you, Lurk. Thanks, Lurk. We appreciate you letting us know what time it is. You're awesome. I hope we don't can... move. Don't move. No, I hope he lets us leave. Let leave no sudden movement. <laughs> Let's just let him leave first, okay? Uh, so that brings us to Rappos Travis, oh is the first up tonight. He's in the hot seat, so we're going to hear what everybody thinks one by one. Travis. Well, I've always expressed a huge love for anything. It's almost like, okay, this is going to be a little bit of a stretch, but follow me here. <laughs> oh, great. Ah, you. <laughs> She's so sarcastic. <laughs> so fun. Uh, <laughs> It's so, so okay. So okay, comic books fueled a lot of the stories that became the um like chapter serials that then all these people from the eighties like Spielberg and all these guys were kind of recreating with a more visualized you know realism or whatever. All those guys that made shit based off of comic books ended up making things that people ended up making comics off of and cartoons off. And so I just, I've always loved these properties from the eighties. I took the time to care about their mythology and it made you like, Holy fuck. I want to read a book series. I want to play a video game. I want to read comics. I want to be in this universe. I just want to be in this universe. I want to find out more about, I mean, just, and I think it's because of all the shit. Like, I mean, yeah, it's a joke every time Egon mentions something, but it's a character thing. It's always, I collect mold, spores, and funguses. My parents didn't let me have toys. I, I straightened a slinky. A slinky. But I, straightened. I, you know, Ray. Oh, my parents, I was born in that house. I was, you know, everything these characters say, build this fucking universe. Far beyond even a, com- well, this is why I, I do like comedies. Comedies are all about building character. Not necessarily plot. Not, it's all about comedy's always been about building character. You have to have a no, funny about telling jokes. You have to have a funny That's character. Like well, you nowadays. have to have a funny <laughs> character yeah. to know what their quirks are. You have to know like what happened to this guy. What ha- you know? That's building character to me, and and it just really helps that Harold Ramis and mostly Dan Aykroyd have this like r- real love it's for the love. supernatural and and unexplained and. Because it, it just builds something that... I mean, this is why I fucking don't like this. The, this, the remake that happened. Those people don't have a, any love for the spiritual or supernatural or science fiction. or They don't. They just want to tell a bunch of fucking stupid jokes. And it's like, this is what made the original a classic. And what I think makes this a fucking good movie. I like Vigo the Carpathian. I think he's a cool villain. I think he's a better villain than any Marvel movie has produced. <laughs> Cause you know about him. You just know shit about him. He's a threat. There's nothing in any Marvel movie that even equals Vigo. I mean, not that there's not like some slow, like, I, I think I could edit 15 or 20 minutes out of this movie. There's some really slow parts and there's some things that just kind of like rehash, uh, things from the first one but i still think it's a a great part of the i mean you you only have two ghostbuster movies i'm gonna repeat that you only have two ghostbuster movies fucking appreciate it because it's a at least a relatively good story as much as it like mimics the first one it still has its own story it's not it's not a building conducting thing with zool blah 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 it has its own new villain it acts like a second act where you can just get in there and experience what the Ghostbusters are doing. And I love the fact that you see where they are. Even five years later, I like that they're not the same people. Mm. I mean, in a way, they kind of are, but they're not in the same place where, you know, my biggest gripe of Star Wars is it's fucking 50 years later. It's like, I'm a smuggler. It's like, what the fuck? Okay, all right, you're doing what you did. None of us are going to be doing what we did when we were 20, when we were fucking like 40 or 50. We hope. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. That's the hope. Yeah. <clears throat> so I love that this movie, even in five years, I like how these characters moved and accelerated. And, you know, and even though the basics are the same, eh, fuck it, they showed it. You can put that in your mind, and that's part of the universe building. You know, everything about this movie is universe building. I wish there would have been a true three. All right, relax. I didn't hate this movie. Okay. <laughs> oh, I just got to put that up front. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit. Because now I'm just going to talk shit about it. No, yeah, the, yeah, uh, yeah. The, first, the first act of this movie, <clears throat> I mean, again, 
conceptually, I would have liked it if they had done something different. Uh, but dealing with what they gave us, it's like the first 20 minutes, 25 minutes, I think are pretty decent because I noticed, you know, it's like we're all laughing. The jokes are funny. It's kind of cooking. It's like, okay, we're setting up the new Ghostbusters adventure. And then for all you guys talking about how funny this movie is, I noticed <laughs> because it wasn't working on me at all from at about all. that point forward. I I it ran I out of once. steam. Yeah, it just the the steam kind of ran out of it in the second act. It just kind of stumble fucked all over the place and like tumbled around <laughs> and like great word. trying to hit it. Stumble things and it was like <laughs> it just became, I thought, kind of a mess where it didn't really feel like it was catching fire or doing anything. And I noticed that the room was quiet. Ladies and gentlemen, they may deny this, but it was like almost dead silent. There were a couple chuckles here and there and then silence compared to the first 25 minutes. Because well, I'm telling you, there's that gap. There's yeah, that little gap use. before you get to the ending uh, that's like a, a little while. fucking... I it's guess almost like right when Winston and them go down and then they repeat yeah, the mayor. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The, no, and no, it's no, because they're doing that. the slow Abbott and Costello like... It's because bump, that's bump. where they're doing the Peter and Dana romance stuff. Yeah. That's why. Some of those scenes yeah. could be like scaled back a little bit. I love their story, but yeah, it could be... Bring yeah. it back a little bit, guys. I think it was where the momentum faltered, I guess, for me. And so then my hope was, it's like, okay, I do remember that there's a big special effects ending to this movie, and hopefully it will pick back up in steam. But it never really did. It was like it, it stumbled so badly that it couldn't, like, get back on the horse to finish the race, you know? <laughs> and it was kind of... And then I thought, like, you know, I don't know. I'm a visual person, right? I experience these things like... Uh, through you know what i see it was like to me the special effects look second rate to the first movie as travis said the movie felt very claustrophobic i don't know uh in the performances seemed a lot broader uh in a lot of the jokes it was just kind of like yeah we're doing this because we're the ghostbusters we did ghostbusters it was awesome and now we can just kind of like do whatever the fuck we want and it feels looser it feels like maybe they're having more fun but it didn't translate to me. It was me watching a bunch of guys having fun. Sometimes that works in comedies because that's basically what comedies are, I think. You know, you're watching a bunch of people. If they're funny, they get together, they have a good time. You have a good time just off of the fumes, you know? Mm. This time, I think they were having a good time, but I just didn't feel it. It kind of felt like they were cast adrift. I think the direction was kind of a little more lax days ago because they knew they had a built-in audience. They knew they had a built-in hit. So it really didn't feel like there was... It didn't feel like this is very subjective, but it didn't feel like the effort was put into this that was put into the first one. The whole it feel the the idea of the mood slime feels very uh, flower child, you know, what? like these guys are holdovers from the, you know, we got to do something positive with our sequel. What are we going to do? We're going to do about like how negative emotions make yeah. make ghosts. It, it will create this apocalypse, and it's like. Uh, you know, and then to bring the, the kid into it, you know, it's like, well, we're going to have, oh, we've got a kid now. And I thought you know, plot point that should have happened was like, it was Venkman's kid. And she what? kept it a, a secret for like, That'd all be horrible. Years, it turned out like Venkman, it's your kid, you know, whatever. It doesn't change the movie. In any it no, bad. but <laughs> it just seems like that. Was it would have made her seem thing. like a dick. <clears throat> Yeah. That would have been That would have damaged Sigourney Weaver. That would have been like, oh my Weaver. God, you're damaged. Do you want to damage Sigourney Weaver, Colin? You were going to let some other dude that you married raise well, my child. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it played into the whole, like, it was Peter showing that he can grow up. That right, he's, yeah, That exactly. he's sort of, like, adopt, not adopting, but sort of adopting right. this other man's child because he cares about her. Well, that's what I was like. Is he auditioning for the role of father to this kid? Or does he just like kids? I think that's how I took it. You know, mm-hmm. ultimately, it was like, he just likes kids and has a natural thing of affinity for them. Well, no, he's a big kid, so he's always felt nervous around kids because he can't be a responsible person. But in this movie, he's supposed to learn the responsibility. But he just but that naturally takes missing. to it. You know, that's what I'm saying. Well, it's like, because, and it's because he cares about her and he wants her back. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> So I guess the long children. and short of it is, is that uh, I think the first Ghostbusters is, I know there's a lot of people who debate about this now, you know, in the culture that we're in. I think it is an unimpeachable classic. I think Ghostbusters is one of the greatest movies ever made. Who talks how many, how many, that? Oh, you'd be surprised now. What? 
in defense of the new they're Ghostbusters new millennials. movie. Oh, they're... There are a bunch of people saying oh, that, well, God. the first one, who made the first one the fucking Bible of, like, you know, comedy movies? Oh, Jesus. It's like, and you go back and look at the reviews at the time. Ghostbusters wasn't, like, the, it's... My generation, I think, and then yours, you're obviously coming. But we took that movie and made it like this is one of yeah. the uh, These tent new... poles upon which we hang all of our, you know, this like. This new uh, one will be forgotten. If we, now, years. if we did that with that movie, do we have, uh, as the generations that were able to do that to Ghostbusters, do we have the ability to see that quality in new movies that come out? Can we identify the movies that. Maybe didn't get accepted as when they came out, but will be something put up on a pedestal in twenty years well, from now. Do we have that ability? Philosophical, you can't really determine that because I mean, like Event Horizon has become one in the... some ways. That, like I don't understand. Oh, yeah, really? Event Horizon amongst no. horror fans, of which I count myself yeah. one. Event Horizon is hailed as like this, like oh, that's a fucking. That's because people, like, you people, people want to seem crack. like they're the only ones that understand something. That's like what a true no. like art critic is. They're no, like, it's well, not... these people don't understand no, 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 it, I'm but saying... I love Halloween three. I'm yeah. saying the. the there is a, a, it's it's less the critical consensus than it is just the group of people who are of age. Like it was the first horror movie that they saw in the theater, and it affected them. Yeah, and then they're like, "Event Horizon's a you know unimpeachable classic." It's and you look at it and you're like, no, "I dude. don't understand what you're seeing. It's a terrible movie and whatever." That's like. punk rock. Punk rock is always going to be opposed to something. You know, that's what it is. It's the movie is the movie version of punk rock. Like you hate that movie, I think it's great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Maybe I'm gonna true. rebel. But I think to Sean's point, I think that's how you have to be able to stay a movie fan if you can see the movies that come out and say, you know, this one has the potential. Like, there's something to this that you know was unique or something in some way that's gonna you know be remembered in 20 years from mm-hmm. now. Uh, I think it's a challenge. I mean, obviously, we're sitting yeah. here in, a, in an age where they have remade Ghostbusters. You know, again, yes. I think you know the time. I used to have a problem with piece. remakes, right? Uh, when they remade Texas Chainsaw Massacre, I'm like, how can you do that? Because the first one is like, to me, it's like a, the Godfather or Citizen Kane or something of a genre. And they remade it. They remade Psycho. They've remade every fucking thing. Easily. They just so went through it. Just by, like, we'll at it. this point, I'm so, you know, I've been beaten down by the fact that remakes are just a fact of life. Mm-hmm. I actually enjoyed the new Ghostbusters movie as I didn't think it was funny. And that's it's my criticism of it. Not, it's I can't not believe funny. we're reviewing the new Ghostbusters. It tries to, uh, have to as we comparison, have to comment on it. yeah, as as a comment on this movie, I had more fun at Ghostbusters the remake than I had watching Ghostbusters two. That's right. You saw Mike the, drop every the show. The, yeah, but you you saw the new Ghostbusters in three D. Yes, you love three D. Well, that's also that true. was With a, a huge passion. Factor. That was a huge. You will factor. watch but... horrible movies in three D <laughs> and love that's, it. Actually, I wasn't going to go see Ghostbusters. I went to see it because Travis said <laughs> the three D got the greatest three D of for the summer. some of the people that sit around this table. I won't name names, but they were not going to go see this movie. And three D came around. They're just like, let's go see it. <laughs> yeah, went to see it because it was in three D. And uh, wasn't terribly impressed by it. I'm well, kind of, sort of. It's fake. This has a good it, villain. God damn it. <laughs> Uh, see, I disagree with that too. I thought, like, compared to uh, Zool or whoever the fuck showed up at the end of the first one, it's like she or it was a much more formidable. It seemed like a cosmic, you know, cosmic deity had come to Earth. Where this one, it was like, I get it. He's a magician, but once he takes over the possession of this kid, somehow he's going to usher in the end of the world. I, you know, that's what you know the Antichrist. Uh, theory has been, you know, the yeah. whole time a myth or whatever has been that sometime he's eventually going to grow up and take over the world and it's going to be the end of days. But I don't feel that in watching the movie. I thought he was a pretty poor villain, Vigo. Because they close the, the door before it happens. Yeah. So I'm going to say, <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. No, I would say there is Ghostbusters and there, that's it. There's Ghostbusters. The first one. Should have been left alone. Should have been just one movie and one and done. But here you go. So let's pass on Ghostbusters too. This guy. Oh, this guy. Jesus. Mm-hmm. Sean's over here getting the vapors right now. I didn't hate it though. <laughs> I just didn't like it. He didn't hate it. That's progress, you guys. No, he didn't hate it. Um, I'm keeping it short because we've covered everything. I love this movie. Part of my childhood. Um, I thought. Vigo was great. 
I love Peter McNichol in this movie. He's freaking hilarious. Um, I thought the I thought the monsters are great. I thought, yeah, I love everything about this movie. I even as a kid, I was I was a little perturbed by the whole plot being around Dana. I was like, really? There's what, three million people in New York, and it's Dana Barrett again. Like even as like a five year old, I'm like, what? No, um, I wasn't real up with the whole relationship with Peter and Dana. But everything else. She speaks the truth. <laughs> it's true. She speaks it's the truth. True. Ever, but I seriously. I felt it in 1989. I yeah. felt it tonight. You yeah, don't remember 1989. It's true. But yeah, everything else about this movie, I love. I think it's entertaining as hell. Definitely two thumbs up for Ghostbusters 2. Sean. For the longest time in my life, <laughs> I lived in a world where Ghostbusters 2 was where I didn't know that it was apparently disliked. That people would bash this movie. <laughs> that people had but that, that like I lived I in a blissful world where Ghostbusters 2 was awesome. You lived in a blissful ignorance. It was blissful it was ignorance <laughs> that I didn't know people felt this way about this movie. And so and, and then I realized I'm like, oh people actually and it never made sense to me when I when people would say it's obviously now I will say obviously you can't get better than the first Ghostbusters. It's true. I mean, there's just, there's yeah. like, there's like God's law. And then there's Ghostbusters <laughs> is, uh, you can't, you can't You'll make. never the, get better than the first movie of any series. I mean, that, that happens a lot. You're just chasing the dragon. But it's Ghostbusters. Like, I, I, I realize Aliens that. Aliens is pretty good, though. Aliens is pretty fucking awesome. But it's, it's not different. as good as the first one. There is a couple exceptions to the sequel not being as good as the first. We digress. There, we've talked about this. Yep. It's true. But I have always lived in this world where I have loved Ghostbusters too. I love I love the characters. I I do love the love that they have for this universe. Mm-hmm. Um and it's again, uh like I said earlier, I I've I've realized today that I've never watched this with anybody. Like I I've, I've seen it with my brothers a few times when mm-hmm. we were really young cuz we all used to watch Ghostbusters when we had like when we recorded it off TV and and used to watch it back, but never have I watched it with a group of adults. And been able to experience uh, uh, seeing it on a big screen and seeing how it played to other people besides myself. Um, I, it was it was funnier tonight than I ever remember it mm-hmm. being. Um, but I always because I mean, yeah, I'm, Colin, <laughs> I laughed. Nah, I don't yeah, once <laughs> twenty five million to the of good um, ironclad I'm, I'm humor. Su- I'm surprised we got a chuckle from Colin. So that's <laughs> progress. Humor that's wears progress. a chastity belt. It really does. <laughs> um, the I mean, and maybe it's because I've been watching by, them by myself for most of my life. But the I mean, the movies have never been laugh out loud funny to me. Like I've always enjoyed their humor. I've always thought it was pretty smart humor for the universe that they're in. Um, and I've always found it humorous. But tonight, like I was just laughing out loud at some of these characters. Um, Peter McNichol is uh, extremely memorable and extremely quotable mm-hmm. from this movie. Like it's the one. Th- it's w- one of the major things I go back to. Like I love. Like I said, I'll just walk around the house quoting this guy or in certain situations because I love it. He's he created a great, memorable character as far as I'm concerned. And from what I read, he put a lot into like the backstory of this character. He came up with the idea that he was also from Carpathia, which is where the painting comes from and whatnot, which is why he knows so much about it. But I think um, his character is great. Uh, I think the villain is good. I like uh, Travis's idea about how like these doors open and the Ghostbusters go and, you know, Shut them before all hell can break loose. Yeah, it doesn't always need to be end like an earth right. shattering ending catastrophe. And that's, I that's like it. The you other thing, the this is not a movie. And granted, it was made in 1989, so the kind of concept of destroying cities wasn't a huge thing back then with every major blockbuster that came out. But they also don't do that. It feels like, yeah, they're attacking New York, but it feels like a smaller. Uh, kind of threat. And I like this about this movie because, again, it's not just boring buildings being destroyed like m- maybe a new Ghostbusters movie kind of does. It's um, negative ooze dripping from every fucking inch of the um, city onto people's <laughs> fur coats and bringing them to life. And like, I was like, it really is. You got a cool song. Um, <laughs> but I mean, maybe. That's what they, ghosts do, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> they bring in animate things to life. What was chasing you in the park? The park bench was chasing you? Yeah, that's you? great, dude. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I mean, it is... Uh, does it hit the same beats as the first movie? Yeah, 
but it does it twists them in a way, or it gives them new context within this movie. Mm-hmm. That this story it works for me. Like maybe they reset things, but you know what? I'm okay with that. Um, even if uh, Bill Murray's not trying, like he's still doing a fantastic job in this mm-hmm. movie. I think they all are. He's naturally funny. He's just naturally You're funny, and like, charismatic. Never, Bill Murray's never a character. He's Bill Murray. Um, yeah. in a movie. And I think like this was a big part of my childhood. But even like I can still watch it now. I can see the flaws that people will have in it. I can see the flaws mm-hmm. that people have in it. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're sticking the mud. But, <laughs> but I, you know, I can see that, but I can also identify that I still, like, it's still funny. I still enjoy it. Like, the characters are great. I Yeah, I love Ghostbusters, too. Love yeah, it. they're crazy. Everybody, like... You only got two Ghostbusters. You might as well fucking, to like... To live in a world know. where... And it, it's fun, you know, if somebody... And I will say... Two. As a comment... It's a video game. There is a video game, which is actually really great. As a comment on the new one that was released, if there are people out there who, and I'm sure there are going to be, that see that movie and claim it as their Ghostbusters, like, I'm all for Never. that. Like, if that's Never. what they want to do, because you know what? I've got two Ghostbusters movies, and I will always have those. That's and right. I'm happy that I do have them. So if they want to take it. Yeah, if, but if it wasn't for those two, this one wouldn't even be anything. But if you call this any other thing but Ghostbusters, people would be like, what a fucking shit movie. But if they, if I don't um, necessarily uh, get a Ghostbusters movie that I enjoy from here on out, I still got two what I think are great Ghostbusters movies that I will always have and that I love. So I recommend Ghostbusters 2. I think uh, anybody who says this is a bad movie, I, it's it's not a bad movie. A bad attitude. <laughs> <laughs> but again, I can see the flaws. Colin has no sense of humor, but... I love this movie, and I recommend you watch it again with fresh eyes, especially if you haven't seen it in a while and just kind of watch it once and wrote it off. It's a good movie. It's yeah, I think it'll give you everything you need, and like, who doesn't love Ghostbusters? Ghostbusters! I recommend yes. it! Yes. Probably everybody who's listening to this podcast watches that thing like once a year. Ghostbusters! <laughs> All right, so uh, oh. I just have a little addendum to this. Uh, the Ecto Cooler. Yeah. Although it's green... It tastes like orange. It is. Orange. It is orange. That was kind of shocking. I mean, obviously, orange. it shows on the front. Drink. Yeah, citrus. It's tangerine orange. No yeah. Slimer though, because there's no cool cartoon. Like that's the only no, thing no with the box around. that sucks, right? It's because all the old Ecto Cooler had the go- the it's cartoon. Because sli- the kids had to be yeah. like, buy it. Right. I see and something now, I recognize. Holly, what did you think of it? Did it bring back everything oh you ever thought? I, the first time. I had to go on because it wasn't because uh, it wasn't released around here for like the three months before yeah. when it was out. I ordered it off Amazon because I'm like, you know what? This I, co- I just have to have this. Wow. This is why they made a remake. It cans. wasn't to sell. Go- it was to sell fucking juice boxes. You I'm gonna kill myself. <laughs> right, but you right know what? Here. It is. It is to sell juice boxes. But you know what? That's it. And I'm okay with that. If they want to feed this back to me, <laughs> these are the people that I, hate hate capitalism. I get Ecto Cooler. <laughs> They want to make a shitty Ghostbusters yeah. movie? Go ahead. I get Ecto Cooler. No, that's and I'm not happy fucking acceptable, God damn it. No, this no, pro- it's no. not acceptable. <laughs> this, They're going to no. ruin the franchise. Holly, is it the greatest thing? This, you want to bury this Ghostbusters? Brought back, this brought me back to half hour awesome. lunches at Gregory Elementary School with my Lunchable. That's where I went when I drank this. Everybody great. says I still have the old ones, but they don't realize if they pile a bunch of shit on top of those old ones, everybody's going to get sick of the old ones too because they pile too much shit on that top will, of the old ones. That will happen. It will fucking happen. That's not acceptable anymore. <laughs> Say I still have the old ones. Fuck that. We need people that respect the old ones. We that also make the do need that because if we could just stop making the bad. I mean, make a. Re- I'm all for. If you want to make the remake, do it. But Before. love the fucking I, original. I, I, I'll, love it. But you make a if you want to make a different some like but make a good movie. Yeah. Like but I don't I think mean, they do that. They a lot do of it the time. in music all the time, right? Yeah. There's cover there's songs. Covers. There's also And you like you the do differences. New but there's productions of plays. Sure. But I get that because like you can't see a pl- play hasn't been recorded. Yeah. So you can You're, see it forever. And a pl- music a and song, movies. you can get five versions in a year. You can't get five versions of Ghost, but if they make a shitty one, you're that's gonna what have you to get. eat that shit for the next either <laughs> five years until they come up with a better one, or they might ruin the franchise and we'll never see another one. And, we'll, and for the next 20 years, people are like, Ghostbusters don't work. Because we've got stats that yeah. don't pay attention to our fuck-ups. It pays attention to just people who don't like Ghostbusters. But now we've got the Ghost Core. That's not happening. I saw that. I saw that. There's, There's a logo a, on the front they of the made a brand, and They company. made a brand just in case. It's not going to happen. Well, they're making Ghostbusters 2 in spite. <laughs> just in spite. Because it doesn't warrant one. 
By the time the grosses are in, I'm sure worldwide it'll do okay. But it's, it's not, not getting released. It's, it's also not, not a horrible released in movie. China. It's not getting China's released in China. China's the second biggest movie market because in the world. Because you can't do spirits because that makes you believe in God. Yep. I don't know, guys. Tonight we watch Ghostbusters too, and, and I got and I got Ecto Cooler. Yeah, happy. we are talking too much about the I'm remake. I'm happy, and that's all we I'm care happy. about. We got to watch a Ghostbusters and drink Ecto Cooler. <laughs> the only Ghostbusters. It's a good night. And, Mission accomplished. And everyone at the microphones recommended it, so we'll keep going on. All right. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> next week we're gonna be watching Holly's pick, and Holly, what are we watching yes. this week? Are this we, week or next week? <laughs> are you sure? You got any teeth? Next you week we're your teeth? actually gonna watch Legend. You sure? Oh my god, the American any? version Do with Tangerine Dream. <laughs> or the yeah, director's cut. I think it needs to be removed. No, no, I don't. I don't think I'm having Haircut. anything removed. That's gonna major well, surgery. <laughs> no major okay. surgeries. No minor surgeries. I will be here. We will watch Legend. We are going to watch the American version. Oh. Legends on. I'm sorry. <laughs> we will. We will. We'll have a discussion about. We will. The dis- oh. We will discuss <laughs> why. We will discuss why next. Because uh, it's okay. great. <laughs> All right, so that's it for the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until next week, then, the basement is going dark.